Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And today's video is gonna be all about wet spots and glass adhesion issues when you are making candles. And guys, I have to be honest with you, um, this has been something that I have not had too much experience with because I've been using colored vessels. So these are the candles that I have been using since basically the beginning of my whole candle making journey. I got these a really long time ago from when I first knew that I wanted to turn it into a business and it's completely colored. You can't see if there's any glass adhesion issues at all. So it's never been a huge concern of mine because I've never really had to experience it with my own candles. And then when I did go with another vessel, I went with something smaller and it's a matte black tin. Again, you can't see through this, it's completely colored. And to be honest, you guys, that's a huge reason why I wanted colored vessels. Yes, I did fall in love with the matte black jars with the wood lid. I absolutely fell in love with it and that was kind of became more of my style. But in the very beginning, I did get really nervous to use colored vessels because I didn't want people to be able to see any of the imperfections or the mistakes that were happening. And that's exactly what I thought that wet spots were for the longest time. I thought that you were doing something wrong or there was a mistake happening. And let's just go over exactly what wet spots are and why they occur. So basically, wet spots is a term that candle makers use to describe glass adhesion issues with your candle. So if after you've made your candle, it looks something like this, those are considered wet spots. The cause of wet spots is just basic science. So wax will expand when it's heated and contract when it's cooled. So if at any point when your candle's cooling down, if there's any inconsistencies with the candle cooling, there could be certain spots of the candle that want to pull away from the glass or you could wake up the next morning like I did on my most recent candle and it looked perfect the night before and I wake up in the morning and there are tons of wet spots all around the candle. I know that there are ways to try to prevent this from happening after you pour your candle. I know that a lot of times people either heat up their jars or they pour at a cooler temperature or a combination of both. I also know that sometimes people will keep their candles in boxes or try to slow down the cooling process to try to prevent those wet spots from forming. And those are really good things to do if they work for you. However, keep in mind that you cannot control what your candle does after it is shipped off to a customer. So if it's really cold outside, there could be many different changes in temperature going on with your candle and the customer could receive it with a bunch of wet spots on it, even though you shipped it out without any wet spots on it. And that just kind of goes back to, we can't control science. So please don't give yourself a headache over it. I, and this is something I need to take my own advice, you guys. I need to take my own advice on this because I have been really scared for some reason about this for the longest time. That's why I've always had colored vessels, just so you can't see any of the mistakes. But most recently, 1617 came out with the Flawless Collection, and they are these vessels right here. And I just think they are absolutely beautiful. Let me see if I can get a close up for you guys. It is uh, these wine glasses, and as you guys can see, right there you can see the little wet spots and this has changed completely um, from the next day when I woke up and I was looking at this the whole top of it was covered and now it's kind of doing these U shapes so it's just being fluctuated based on the temperature in the room and it is what it is at night it gets pretty cold um, it's winter it, it's almost spring but it's still winter right now it's very cold in the mornings and then um, I will turn on the heater later everything heats back up. So it's going through temperature fluctuations and it's bound to happen. And I am not gonna let that stop me from wanting to add clear vessels to my line because I do want to eventually expand from what I have right now. And I just think these are absolutely beautiful and you can't let that stop you because if you walk into any department store or even Bath and Body Works, um, I'm gonna be throwing up some video footage. I went out this morning and I just looked at all of these candles to see if any of them had wet spots on them. And guys, I had found so many candles, specifically at Target and TJ Maxx. Bath and Body Works, 
they really have their formulations down or temperature controlled in the room or whatever it is. I really only found a couple there that had the wet spots going on, but I did enjoy my time there. They have some really nice smelling candles right now. It gave me some good ideas. Um, but I also went into Target. They had tons of issues at the Target candles as well as TJ Maxx. And this is in no way bashing these companies at all whatsoever. This is just so you guys can actually see that customers do not care about this kind of stuff. We care because we want our products to be as nice and perfect as possible, but we can't control science and we can't control what's going to happen once our candle leaves our house and what we've done. The temperature in the truck or wherever your candle is going to be sat during shipment, we just can't control what's going to happen. Just like we can't control in the summer if your candle is going to be left in a 110 degree truck for four hours. Um, those are just things that we can't control. So we can try to do the best that we can, but we can't give ourselves a headache over it or avoid using those vessels just because we feel like it's going to be an imperfection when really it's just science and it's just the natural way that candles are. And you guys can't tell me that as a customer in the past that you ever cared about this kind of stuff. We only care because we are the ones making it and it's our product and we want it to be the best that we possibly can, but there's just some things that we cannot change. And if you are doing something right now that works for you and you're thinking, no, I can control it. Like, you know, I've had really bad wet spots in the beginning and now I don't anymore. And if that's working for you, then keep doing that. That's this video is not at all to tell you to stop doing it, but to anybody out there that has been very frustrated over their jars because of all these things happening, even if there's a little bit of frosting on it, honestly, you guys, it's all just science and that is what we are working with and we can't control a lot of these things. So definitely don't be afraid to sell your candles like that. I would absolutely, so many people of you guys asked me on Instagram if I would sell a candle looking like this and yeah, absolutely I would. Um, if you would have asked me maybe a year and a half ago, I would have said, no, that's not good. I don't want it to look like that. But now that I understand the process and I understand what's going on, I can't change it. And this is still gonna be beautiful regardless. The only issue I'm having is labeling something like this. Um, I've been trying to look and see what kind of labels are going to work with this because rectangle labels, let me tell you, it does not work on this kind of vessel. So I'm looking up, trying to find a label size and shape that will work for that. Um, but anyways, guys, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. Um, I have not made many videos or any videos like this in the past because I just never had experience with it. And I'm just open and honest with it because of the colored vessels behind me. I just never really had to worry about that kind of stuff because I never had those issues showing to the public. It was all covered behind the colored glass. Um, the only thing that I did have to deal with one time was in the winter time, I wanna say it was probably December, early January. I did have a couple of customers reach out to me telling me that the wax constricted contracted so much that it actually lifted up from the bottom of the tin and they had to push it back down and in one instance it completely covered the wick so they thought that I didn't put a wick in the candle at all so that's you know something that could happen and did happen to me and I didn't understand what was going on at that time so when they said that it didn't look like I had a wick in the candle I was thinking gosh am I losing it that bad did I not put a wick in the candle you know I didn't know if I was just losing it but really I had hid all of these things that are happening and probably happen all the time with these candles but you can't see it so I haven't there's so many things that I'm going to be learning working with a clear vessel that I didn't have to worry about or haven't learned yet with a colored vessel so I think that that's really interesting is that with candle making you're always consistently learning but even working with different vessels you learn new things and I will be the first to admit that I really kind of avoided 
all of these issues and all of these problems because of the vessels that I chose. And I kind of took the easy way out. And I know that. And I've admitted it before in the past. You know, it is what it is. But anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to leave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candico. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.